Holy Ghost. Clap your hands to the Lord. Amen. You're going to make it to heaven. You're going to have to have a made up mind. You ain't going to make it if you're wishy washy. You're going to have to have a made up mind. Oh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Praise God, somebody tonight, make up your mind. Amen. I'm not going to lose my soul. I said, I'm not going to lose my soul, but I'm going to make heaven my home. God called me. God set me free. He called my name. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, somebody. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. My soul says yes. Oh, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. As we remain standing, we're going to go into the word of the Lord tonight. Praise God. And uh, it's something a little bit different tonight. So Brother Travis is going to come up here. And he'll, he'll tell you what we're going to be doing. But we're going to have a move with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Come on, brother. Appreciate Brother Travis. He does a lot of stuff. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord as he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful when a sinner like myself came into an apostolic church service that I said yes unto the Lord. That song does it for me. Oh. Hallelujah. I will give honor to my pastor, to my wife, to my brothers in Christ. I got to know a lot of you over the weekend. I feel blessed to be around such an awesome group of men. I love this church. I love this faith. I love Jesus. You are in the right place tonight. Come on, there might be a lot of wrong things going on in your life. But as of this moment, you're in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You could be in a lot worse places, I'm telling you what. Woo! Amen. Pastor said we're doing something a little bit different tonight. And before I get in the Word, I just want to kind of do a quick introduction. If I could have my assistants please make their way up here. Be uh, appreciated. Assistant one and assistant two. Amen. You see, a couple of weeks ago, God dropped a message in my heart as he usually does, and I tuck it away. I, I write some notes. And Pastor called me on Monday, and of course, it's a busy week for us. We're getting ready for camping, and uh, me and my wife are going to Flax. There's a lot of stuff going on, but Pastor shared this, uh, what he wanted to do for tonight. And as soon as he started talking, this message came to mind. And I knew I didn't have to seek any longer because God was in tune with what was going on, and Pastor was in tune with what was going on. And so he said, Travis, I want you to preach a message, and it's going to be all yours, but I want you to get a couple young men to help you out. <clears throat> and I knew with what God gave me, he gave me three key elements to this message, and I just knew that having two gentlemen helping me out and the theme that this message is going to bring to us was just right on point. Now, I've never done something like this, so it's a little nerve-wracking for me as well, but I know for a fact that God's going to do something great tonight. Hallelujah. 
So I got a couple young gentlemen here that's going to help me preach the word tonight. And let me tell you what's going to happen. God's going to come into this place. And God's going to minister to every heart, to every person in here. And his spirit's going to break loose, and there's going to be a move of the Holy Ghost. I'm saying that in faith right now. I feel it from when I walked in. I felt it during worship. I know God wants to take us to another level, and he's going to do it. Hallelujah, do you believe it? God's going to do it. Jesus. Hallelujah, open your Bibles. I got some lengthy scripture. I apologize. We're going to start with Deuteronomy chapter 31. We're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to go to John chapter 14. But starting with Deuteronomy chapter 31, starting with verse 14. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua, everybody say Joshua, and present yourself in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves to the tabernacle of the congregation. We're skipping down to verse 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, be strong and of good courage for thou shalt bring the children of Israel unto the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. We're moving on to 2 Kings chapter 2, starting with verse 9. I'll give you a second. The Bible says, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha says, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it will be so unto thee. But if it not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell on him, and he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell on him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither to thither. And Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Amen. One more. I promise I'll be done with that. John chapter 14, starting with verse 8. <clears throat> Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. Tonight's message, with the help of these young men here, is faith, follow, and finish. 
Let's raise our hands. Let's thank the Lord right now. Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord God, for all that you're doing tonight. God, I ask your spirit to visit us tonight. Oh, Lord, anoint all your messengers tonight, God. Let there be a powerful move of the Holy Spirit tonight, God. I ask you, Jesus, to lose signs and wonders in the building. Release faith in this building tonight, Lord God. Jesus, I bind any distractions or anything that hinders your word from moving among us, Lord God. Let there be an apostolic authority, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit reside in our hearts. Let there be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost tonight. I love you. I thank you. And we all said amen. amen. You may be seated. Faith, follow, and finish. Apostolic tabernacle has prophecies to fulfill. It has been prophesied that we are to be the biggest denomination in Casa Grande. It has also been prophesied we are to experience a thousand soul revival. I don't know if you've looked at a crowd of a thousand people. But that has been prophesied over this church body. But in order to experience that revival, that kind of growth, there are some key elements that we must do as a body and that we must do as an individual. Tonight we will explore what God showed me through his word with these three key elements that will propel us to the next level. And as I said, we will be doing something a little different tonight, but it will be fitting as it will also demonstrate the purpose of the message in itself. This message, although dropped in my heart from the Lord, was materialized by our pastor, Andy Combs. It is also an extension of pastor. I appreciate this man of God right here. He is sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I love him for it. I'm going to call up Brother Tyler. He's going to give you a word of the Lord. I praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to go straight into the word of the Lord today. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 through 8. The Bible says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all of Israel, be strong and of good courage, for thou must go. Excuse me, I'm going to, I can't do with that. Sorry. Um, for thou wilt go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their father to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is it that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. So tonight I would like to talk to you guys about the elders' mantle. So for a little background, the passage of scripture we just read was when Moses announced to the children of Israel that Joshua was going to be their leader from this point forward. We all know the story how Josh, Moses, forgive me, had smote the rock instead of speaking to it as God had commanded him and therefore could not go into the promised land. But what about the millions of um, the children of Israel that he had already brought this far? God, just because of one man made a mistake, he's not going to abandon all of them. It was time for a new leader. And that mantle had fallen upon Joshua. Now Joshua... As we read in the Bible, was Moses' servant. He was not used to a position of leadership. So you can imagine how surprised he must have been when Moses came up to him and told him, it's you. You're going to lead this great people to the promised land. So maybe God has called you to do something for his kingdom or has given you a promise, and you're thinking, who am I? Why me? What have I done that's, like, so special, you know, like, Really, who am I? I'm just one of many in the church, one of many. But what we learned from the story of Joshua is that that doesn't matter. When the mantle comes to us, we have to accept it, and we have to go forward and walk in the blessing that the elders have passed down to us. In the story of Elijah and Elisha, a very popular story in the Bible if you read it, um, we know that Elijah had passed down his mantle to Elisha when he was taken up into heaven. It was Elijah's, Elisha's job from this point to carry on the legacy that Elijah had left with him. Now, he probably um, wasn't really expecting that to happen. 
Elijah probably didn't tell him that he's going to leave and that it was going to be all up to him and that he would have to carry on this burden by himself. But what's important to note is that when it came down, he picked up the mantle and accepted the calling that um, Elijah had left him. He picked up that mantle and went into the um, promises that God had for him. So when God calls, it is our job to answer. No matter how big or important we feel, it's not up to us. It's up to God to use us as he wishes. And if he sees us fit for a task or calling or he gives you a promise, you better believe he's going to see you through. Have faith in God and step into the unknown like Joshua did and watch what God will do for you. Amen, amen. Okay, so I'm going to be looking in the book of both books of Kings today. Uh, this was, for a little bit of context, uh, the book of Kings, it takes place during a really bad period uh, in Israel. Um, and during this period, God called Elijah to call out the false prophets for their false gods and their false worship and to make the people aware of why there was a drought in Israel. Uh, in these times, uh, Israel was under control of King Ahab, one of the worst kings of Israel. Uh, Elijah represented a different kind of dominion in these times. Elijah had no connections to the political establishment or the royal family. So because of this, he had the ability to tell the truth without being corrupted or coerced. He was a bold person who spoke for the truth. God's calling. Um, Elijah was saved by God in the desert when he was given food and water in the middle of the drought. Uh, God calls Elijah to be the true prophet of Israel. In the beginning, he started off by prophesying to a widow and her son about God promising to provide food for them. But towards the end of his journey, he was about, when he was about to die, he was crossing the Jordan River on dry ground. In order to take your ministry to the next level, you need to understand that there are three core foundational pieces to your ministry that every minister goes through. Number one, you need to have faith in God and his word. You have to follow God's plan with all your heart. And lastly, you need to finish the good work that he started in you. I want to talk for a little bit about how Elisha finished Elijah's ministry. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, and this is the NIV, the uh, Bible says, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of uh, Shaphat. Uh, he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Skipping down to verse 21, uh, So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. Elisha gave up his entire life in 1 Kings to follow the prophet Elijah. Deciding to leave your old life behind and follow a ministry led by God is taking on an extraordinary leap of faith. Elijah had faith, but before he started his walk, he had to destroy some things. We must let go of some things in order to follow our ministry closer. We can't do both. We need to let go of some things. When you take that leap of faith, you need to have consistency and a steadfast, hyper-focused mind on the things of God. Elisha followed Elijah with extreme focus because he understood what was at stake. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, uh, Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Elisha did not leave Elijah's side. He did this consistently throughout 2 Kings, repeating the same line, as surely as the Lord lives. Well, as surely as the Lord lives and I am alive, I will not abandon my ministry, no matter how much stress it causes me, no matter how rough the valleys get, because I know that God will not call us into a life of ministry and not give us the tools and the authority we need to finish it. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 through 13 says, As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. After Elijah was taken up into heaven, Elisha received exactly what he had asked from Elijah, a double portion of Elisha's spirit, and he became the Lord's prophet. Elijah went on to perform the most miracles recorded in the Bible. 
He did this with boldness. He did this with confidence in God's plan. People, we need to walk in boldness. We need to walk in faith. And if we do that, we will enhance our ministry. God has called us. God has called us all for a walk with him, for a ministry with God. And he will give you the tools. And he will give you the authority. No matter how hard it gets. No matter how stressful it gets. I said God will deliver. I said God is a savior. I said God will save you. Jesus. In Jesus' name. A lot of times we like to push our ministry out by saying things like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Imagine if Elisha said that when Elijah called him. We are in the same, I believe that we are in the same predicament that Elijah was in, that Israel was in. They were under very bad ruling. They, they were worshiping false gods and, and, and praying to false gods. And if you read a little bit more in Kings, you'll read about how Elijah, how Elijah called out uh, the king of Israel. But we are in the same predicament that Israel was in. We are in the last days. We need to get up. We need to have patience. We need to have a determination for God's word and for God's ministry. And if we do that, it's going to take a multitude of us. But if we do that, we will pour out God's spirit to the land. We need to have consistency to finish what God started, not to just start a walk with God, but to finish this walk with a full-fledged ministry. Amen. Let's give them all a round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. Joshua, as Tyler talked about, was appointed to take over the leadership of Israel to guide the people into the promised land. When we first read about Joshua in Exodus 17, 9, as the person Moses puts in charge of fighting the Amalekites who attacked Israel in the wilderness. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out, man, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. See, one of Joshua's key qualifications was his faith. And Tyler touched on that. In order to be used by God, we need to have faith. And I'm not just talking about the faith that we believe there is only one God. That's important. But if we are to excel in what we're doing now, if we are to uh, for, see the promises fulfilled with this church and your life, we need to have faith and faithfulness to ministry. So Joshua's faith to believe in the promised land when others were skeptical was one of the reasons why he was selected. There's going to be a lot of naysayers in your life, whether it's family or other church members. They may not see the vision that God has casted for this church. They may see finances as an obstacle they don't want to tackle. They may see that it's too hot or too hard. See, there's a lot of people that are comfortable with the way things are. And God's not going to want to use people that don't believe that if it was said, it will be done. Not only that, his faithfulness to Moses, being appointed such a prominent task as leading a, a military. Let me tell you something. If ministry is called upon you by the man of God, you may not feel qualified or you may feel overqualified. But let me tell you something. It was Joshua's faithfulness to the man of God in his life which made the promise come true. And one of the things that we can see that kind of exposes that is I'm sure how nervous these guys were being called up here on a Sunday night to share the word. And I don't mean to call you guys out. But I'm telling you, it's not just a person that dresses nice, that talks eloquently, that fits the mold. It's not just the pastor's son or the preacher's son. God wants to use a willing vessel. 
And as long as you're willing, God's going to do a miracle in your life. His, his will will be fulfilled if we are a willing vessel. I'm thankful in a house full of people that are willing vessels tonight. He was one of the 12 scouts that first entered Canaan. And only he and Caleb believed that God could actually do it. Boy, what is that like? That would be like this congregation right here. Only two of y'all believed in what God was saying. I'm thankful it's not like that, Pastor. But I'm telling you, faithfulness pays off. Hallelujah. Faithfulness pays us. Pays off. Our faithfulness to assign tasks in ministry should be taken with confidence and with a spirit of excellence. I understand we get tired. I was tired after not sleeping for three nights, cold, wet. And I had to prepare for today. And I could have easily picked up the phone and said, Pastor, you know, it's just not working out. Can we postpone it till next week? But I pushed through the tiredness and I pushed through that. I got up early. I studied the word. I prayed. And I put my best into it because that's what we do when ministry is assigned to us with the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Whether it's sweeping a floor or it's cleaning the restrooms. If I'm cleaning the restroom, it's going to be the cleanest restroom I, you would ever want to see because it's the Lord's restroom. It's the best that we can do, regardless of how much we enjoy it, how tired it makes you feel, or how impactful you think it may be if somebody else did it. Have faith in the promise tonight, church. We will get a new building. But it won't come without a battle. And it won't come without a struggle. Remember, the promised land was a promise, but there was battles that had to be fought before it was taken. There was struggles that needed to happen before it was a reality. Come on, there ain't nothing that is going to happen in, in, uh, in, in God's word that didn't come without a struggle. So when the struggle starts getting real, remember that your faith and your faithfulness to the ministry and to God is what's going to carry you through to the promised land. We need to keep the faith, both in Christ and our leadership. It took Joshua's faith in God to continue his leadership role, and it took strong faithfulness to Moses to fulfill the calling on the people's lives. Moving on to Elisha, I loved how you illuminated that. Hallelujah. From our opening text, we see Elisha as being the successor of the great prophet Elijah. But a lot had to transpire in order for Elisha to be in that particular situation. Elisha is first mentioned in 1 Kings 19. And he was to be appointed to be prophet of Israel. 1 Kings 19, 19 and 20 says, So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the ox, oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto them, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? You know, it took quite a bit of faith for Elisha to follow Elijah. Uh, we, we cruise over those scriptures sometimes. But Elisha was a wealthy man. He had oxen. And that was just basically like Rolls Royces. It was a form of currency. And I don't know about you, but if I land a really good paying job, I'm pretty happy. Bills are getting paid. Food's on the table. I can buy some things that I want to buy. Pretty comfortable. So when a man of God comes by and says, quit your job, follow me. What are you going to do? I'm going to take 10 days vacation. I'm going to try this out. 
If it don't work out, I can go back to my job. Come on. I've done it. I've gone on vacation and tried another job just to see what was going on. Knowing I still had my job in my back pocket if I needed it. Who said that was a smart way to do it? It is, right? Because it worked out. Amen. But let me tell you, that would have been the easy thing to do. He could have been like, cool, let me find some people to plow my oxen for me. I'll go with you see if this ministry thing works out. But he didn't. You know what he did? Is he ran back, kissed mom and dad, and he slaughtered all of his livelihood. Sacrificed it. Burned it. Destroyed it. Why? Because he knew when the going gets tough down the road in ministry... That he couldn't just crawl back to his old life and be comfortable again. When we sold that building on Saguaro Street, we didn't just come here to transition. And when things got rough, we could just go back to Saguaro Street. Gone. Out of the picture. Not even in the, We're not. We're moving forward. And it's the same thing that Elisha did. It's the same thing we need to do. Hey, I know things are getting tough. I know it's hard to set up every service. I know the seats that you sit on are hard. I know it's hot. And I know there's rocks outside. And I know it's dark. I know there's all these things. But there's going to be a day when we have a building four times this size. And there's going to be half a Casa Grande worshiping in the house of God. But it took some struggle. It took us faith. And it took us following the man of God to that. Hallelujah. By killing his oxen, Elisha made a strong commitment to follow Elijah. Hallelujah. We need to kill our old way of life if we want to move to the next level. I'm talking about right now. I, I am thankful to be around a bunch of amazing, powerful saints of God that are probably a lot more holier than I am, more disciplined, praise more. They preach better. I feel inadequate when I come up here every single time. And when God showed me these words, he says, look, this ain't just for the church, bucko, but this is for you too. If you want to take your ministry to the next level, you're going to have to burn some things in your life. Some comforts that you got used to, you're going to have to get rid of. And us as a body, we need to understand something. We like to talk about the great things God has for Casa Grande. But let me tell you something. It's not going to co uh, come without us trying to get rid of some things in our lives. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, say, that's me. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We got to pass away some of our old things tonight. Hallelujah. Experience the new things, the great things to come. If we want to see the promises that God has for our church, our willingness to follow is imperative. We need to follow God, his direction. But we also need to be willing to follow our pastor with everything we got. We need to be behind this man. I'm not trying to lift you up, Pastor, but I'm telling you, the vision that you cast and the burden you have for this church and this city, for every soul that comes into this building, that you're the first one to pray with them and you're the last one to pray with them. I just see the vision over, all over it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm behind you, Pastor. I know it's going to get hard. I know you get frustrated. But you got a church that's behind you, that loves you, that supports you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, can we just pray for a couple minutes? I feel the Holy Ghost right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help my faithfulness, God. Oh, Hallelujah, Jesus. We need faith, church. We need to follow. But we need to finish. Hallelujah, we need to finish. Hallelujah. I wanted to just let you know that we as a church, we often don't feel good enough or ready or equipped to do the great things of God. I mean, thank you, sir. Assistant number two. I know there's people out there right now that enjoy the service and they pray and they shout and they worship. I just know there's some of you out there that don't feel like you're at that caliper that you could pray somebody through the Holy Ghost. You can't get involved in ministry. You're not, you're not righteous enough yet. You make too many mistakes. You're just a peon. You're just a pew, somebody that just shows up. Who am I? But if we want to get to that next level, it's all hands on deck. It's all hands on deck. You're needed. You're good enough to pray for somebody. There is a need for you in this church. And when we move on to the another, bigger church, there's going to be more positions that are needed. We need more greeters. We need more singers. We need more worshipers. We need people to teach Bible studies. We need people to, to minister and singles minister. There's a lot that we need to reach a 1,000 souls. You are good enough tonight. Don't be afraid to come up and pray for somebody. Don't be afraid to approach a ministry leader and say, hey, how can I get involved? I don't know much. Maybe I can shadow. You know what? We would love for you to come to us and ask if you can help out. Hallelujah. Even if it's just helping tearing down music equipment, you're needed. I don't think there's a better example of feeling unfit to do something than Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14. When he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, ye shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. God himself, all the miracles Jesus did, he said, you're going to do that too, and you're going to do greater works than those. Everybody point at themselves right now. Greater works than those is what Jesus said you're going to do. You want to know why our church continues to grow? Because there is a city outside of this room that is hungry for the real thing. They're tired of false promises. And they have real issues. And they want to believe in miracles. And they want to believe in the miraculous. And there's a soul out there that nobody can reach but you. Jesus says we're going to do greater works. That still just blows my mind. I don't know what greater works he's talking about, but I believe it. I believe that if we just have a little bit more faith, if faith breaks out in this room right now, cancers could be healed right now. Diabetes can be healed right now. Lives can be changed right now. Come on, financial breakthroughs can happen right now. Depression can flee right now. Come on, strongholds that you've been dealing with, addictions, come on, can be broken right now. Come on, it's time for us to cross over in the miraculous.
But it's going to take all of us to believe it. Musicians, come, please. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. We can feel inadequate to do the work for God. We can often feel like we just need to be better Christians before I step into that. And please, by all means, if you're getting involved in ministry, please talk to leadership. I'm not saying to go outside of that. But I'm talking about us not feeling like we deserve to do anything great for God. And, and when I thought of this message and, and these young men came up, and, and Tyler, I'm not, gonna, I'm not picking on you, son, please. But understand, if you didn't know, Sunday night's like prime time at our church. Right? It's, the, it's like the A team. That's what young ministers look at it like. I'm just being honest. I'm being human right now. I, I'm being human, okay? And Tyler didn't feel like he was practiced enough, if you will, to be doing this. Surely he thought there was some other youth that could do a more adequate job. And, and Xavier, I know, I remember the day you got the Holy Ghost at our church. I remember with your long hair and talking about Denny's. And now you're going on mission trips and it seems like things are happening so fast. Surely there's somebody more qualified to do the work of God. Surely, Pastor Combs, you could have called somebody else for tonight's message. Surely there's somebody that's just better than me. Surely there's somebody. Now, I'm just a musician. Who am I? I'm just in Sunday school and youth class. Who am I? Guys, I'm just telling you, I, I feel in the Holy Ghost. I don't know if I was, I don't know if I got this right tonight. <laughs> With the way God, sometimes he throws things in your heart and you got to try and put it in words, it's hard. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we can feel inadequate to do the powerful things. And so we sit back and we let the professionals go up there and do all of it. But in reality, the professionals, the 20% are tired and they're weary. And God knew that Elijah couldn't do all the things that he needed. So he needed somebody else to pick up that mantle, to take it. He needed somebody fresh. He needed somebody with ambition. He needed somebody that said, I can do it. And so when you see these hardworking people in your church that are there every day doing all the things, they make it look so easy. But, Pastor, you're the first one here to pray for somebody and last one to leave a lot of the times. And it makes it look like that's Pastor. Look at him go. He's my pastor. He's so awesome. Call Pastor Lamb. Pray for this person because he's really good at praying through. In reality, Pastor's tired. And he's weary, but he has such a love for his people that he would just give up. If he had one ounce of energy left, he would do it praying for his soul. That's the kind of burden we need. That's the kind of burning fire we need inside of our hearts. I'm not leaving until that person gets what he came for. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, you are needed tonight. Come on, the people that do everything, they're tired and weary. I'm not, I'm not talking down about our ministry. But you're needed. You're worthy. You're good enough to do something for God tonight. Strengthen your faith. Follow with all your heart. Finish what God called for apostolic tabernacle. Come on, it's not too late. I don't care what your past has been. I don't care where you've been for the last six, eight months, a year. God needs you right now. He's reaching out right now and saying, man, I need you. I need you. Jesus, can we just close our eyes? I'm sorry. I, just, I wish.
wish you could feel the burden that God put in my heart right now. I just wish you could just feel it. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's not time to sit and just contemplate anymore. You got to make that commitment right now because the Spirit's drawing right now. The Spirit's drawing. I know you guys can feel it. I'm not the only one that can feel it right now. It's time. You're needed. Finish what was prophesied over this church and over your life. It starts now. I'm opening these altars. Let's just come up and give God everything. Give him every sin. Give him every fault. Give him everything that frustrates you. Come on, you're good enough to do something for God tonight. Come on. Let's renew our faith tonight. Let's renew our faithfulness to ministry tonight.
Yeah.